We are all familiar with the UC Davis Children's Hospital partnership with ABC 10 and the Sacramento Public Library for our 10 Books to Read program where we all encourage everyone to instill a love of reading in your children by sitting down with them and reading. It is just one of the examples of the investment that UC Davis Children's Hospital has in your child's well-being. So right now they're actually making it their priority to inform parents about helmet safety. Here to tell us more is registered nurse and trauma prevention coordinator. We have Christy Adams. Christy, great to have you back on the show. Good morning, thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's talk about the absolute necessity of children wearing helmets while they ride their bike. Yes, absolutely. Um, helmets are, well, first of all, there's a law in California that children under 18 need to wear a helmet anytime they're riding a bike, skateboard, scooter, even hoverboards. Okay. They changed the law recently for that. But more importantly for us, it's about preventing the head injuries. Mm -hmm. At UC Davis Children's Hospital, we see over 100 children a year who come to the hospital. They've been in a bike crash and um, uh, actually 85% of those were not wearing helmets. 85% of those kids really? didn't have a helmet on. And about a third of them had head injuries that were severe enough that they had to be hospitalized for the head injuries. Wow, mm -hmm. and, and what's so discouraging about that is that it can be prevented, right? Absolutely, yep, yeah. and it's a message we really want to get across to parents to make sure their children are wearing helmets. The brain is such an important part of our body and so delicate. Yeah, so how is a brain injured in a crash? Let's talk about that. Well, I have a couple props here to show okay. you. Um, first of all, we know how important the brain is. It, yes. it controls all of our functions in our body, but a lot of people don't think about how delicate the brain is inside the head. You know, we're, we're familiar with the hard skull, but inside the head, the brain is actually pretty uh, pretty soft. This is our jello brain mold have, that you can to feel it. there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We actually use this jello mold to teach kids in, um, in school how delicate the brain is. And if you think Think about this kind of um, move it see how that wiggles yeah. quite a bit moving around inside your head so the skull itself we know is pretty pretty firm um, but it's actually let me open my brain up here it's actually pretty thin so the brain is inside and kind of jiggles around a little bit um, normally right mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of fluid that kind of floats it around and protects it but when you're actually traveling at a pretty decent speed like you are on a bike and your brain goes forward when you hit the ground, that point of impact, all that force from that crash is actually going to go back into the brain, into the skull, and be absorbed by the brain itself, causing lots of um, jiggling. jiggling damage, right? Mm -hmm. And the brain itself actually uh, bruises and bleeds like any other part of the body. The difference is brain tissue does not heal like other parts of the body. Mm. So for example, if you break your arm, put a cast on, six to eight weeks later, it's healed, take the cast off, you have no idea that anything's happened for the most part. A brain injury is, it can be actually permanent because the brain tissue does not regenerate like mm -hmm. other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. So brain injuries themselves are often lifelong injuries. Okay, and clearly that's one of the main reasons why we need to prevent that. Yeah. Not only is it the, the center of the body for function, but if it gets damaged, then that's it. That's per it's permanent, okay. yeah. All right, yep. so, so let's talk about how a helmet protects the head. So absolutely, I've got two helmets here. Um, this one, this is a regular bike helmet that you'll see. Uh, a lot of adults wear this type of helmet. Yes, cause I have a helmet uh, just like that. Yep, and yeah. this one is uh, rated by safety standards for use with bicycles. Um, for our program, we actually give away helmets that look like this. This is called a multi-purpose helmet, mm -hmm. and it's rated for safety for bike, skateboard, scooter, multi-purpose. So you'll see kids riding um, with uh, the, the scooters and the skates, and they need they prefer this look usually to this yeah, look it's anyway. It's cool. This it is, is a cool. cool. One. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but both helmets will protect in the same way, and they protect in three different ways. Um, first of all, when the helmet impacts the ground, um, let me put this here. You can see there's a single point of impact, and all that force is now spread over the entire helmet and on the inside of the helmet and on the outside of the skull versus if the helmet or excuse me if the head itself just impacts you see there all that force goes right into the one head. single point so yeah. that spreads the crash force so basically the helmet absorbs the force it does that's actually the, the second way it spreads uh -huh. the force but it also absorbs the force and the third way it protects the brain, and uh, a lot of people don't realize this, is this foam lining right here uh -huh. will actually compress when the head impacts the inside of the helmet. And as it's compressing, it's actually slowing the head and brain down uh -huh. so that by t the time the head comes to a complete stop, the brain inside is actually going much slower and less force and less injury is put wow. back into the brain. So extremely essential. Give some tips real quick. How can parents convince their children that they should be wearing their helmets and make sure that they do it? 
Number one, wear your helmet yourself. So parents okay. who wear their helmets, their kids are far more likely to wear helmets. Absolutely. So be a good example. Be a good example and be consistent. Starting children early and mm -hmm. making sure they wear their helmet every single time they ride. And that it's fit properly. So have them wear it low on the forehead so you can't fit more than two fingers here. Straps, make a V over the ears and snug enough that you can't fit more than two fingers under the chin strap. Is there a place that parents can go for more information so they can kind of double check that fitting? Absolutely. So buckleup.ucdavis.edu, we've got free helmet fittings and uh, with our Coles Care Spunny, we can actually provide helmets for families that don't have them.